Welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about pulse width modulation, also known as PWM. This is a way that we can output different levels of a signal. Instead of just putting out zero volts, which would be a logical low, or five volts, which would be a logical high, we can put out anywhere using, using pulse width modulation, we can put out anywhere between zero, a value between zero and 255. At 255, that would be a full-time duty cycle, and we'll look at that in just a second. But at 255, you would be putting out five volts. At zero, you'd be putting out zero volts. Anywhere in between, uh, let's say at 128, you'd be putting out 2.5 volts. The, <clears throat> the statement that we use for PWM is analog, you've heard of analog read, it is analog write. And then you say like where you're writing to comma the level. So this is going to be a pen or a variable representing one of the, the uh, analog write pens. And this is going to be a number between 0 to 255. So what do we use pulse width modulation for? Well, in one of the examples we're going to do today, uh, you can use pulse width modulation to actually control the brightness of an LED. Because you'll be controlling the voltage that that LED is receiving. It'll vary the brightness. Another, another function of PWM would be, this is not something we'll be using today, but this is a motor controller, L298N motor controller. And we, we use PWM to control the speed of a motor. And we will look at this later. But how does it work? So PWM um, sends at a frequency of typically 500 to 1,000 times per minute, sends out pulses. And if we are running at, let's say, 128 for that value, then your pulse will look like this. It will be on for half the time, and it will be off for half the time. That's called a 50% duty cycle. That would be at 128, using that analog write command, and your effective voltage out here would be two, whoops, 2.5 volts. Um, if in this, this period of time here, this happens about 500 times per second. So do the math on that. I'm not gonna do the math, but it's very fast, and if you, if you look at it with the multimeter, it's going to appear to be 2.5 volts. But in reality, if you look at this real small time slice, it's gonna be five volts for this amount of time, and then it's gonna be zero volts for that amount of time. So it's a digital representation of an analog idea <laughs> of 2.5 volts. So, um, and we'll look at, you know, if we did like, a, uh, let's say we had, let's see, we were using a value of 64. Well, that would be 1.25 volts, and this would be a 25% duty cycle. So it would be at 5 volts for 25% of the time, for 25% of that cycle, and then 75% of that cycle it would be at 0 volts. Hopefully that makes sense, but we're going to look at some practical examples of using PWM now. Okay, we have our Arduino Uno here. We have an LED with the long leg attached to a, um, this is a 150 ohm resistor. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with this in a minute. First, I want to show y'all something on the Arduino Uno. Not all pens can be used for PWM. Uh, you see this, it says digital here. These are all digital pens. And then it says PWM, and then it has a, like a little tilde looking sign inside of these parentheses. Then you'll notice we have a tilde sign next to 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. So those six uh, digital outputs 
then we can actually use the um, the analog right command with. So that's just something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and make our connections real quick on the Uno board. Um, so we're gonna need, we know we'll need a ground. So I'll connect to ground. Yeah, all right, connect it to ground and we're gonna connect that over here on the mini breadboard to the short leg of the LED. And then we'll connect I'm not doing a very good job of using the correct colors here for this, but that's fine. Then we'll use which pen? We'll use pen number nine. That is a PDM, uh, PWM pen there. So we're going to pen nine to the resistor. Okay, so that's all, that's all we have to do for the connections. Let's go ahead and write up a quick bit of code. Let's see for the setup. Do we need to do anything here? Not really. I don't think we need to do anything. Um, let's go ahead and just write a quick for loop. For int i equals zero, uh, i less than equal to 255. 255 is the upper range of analog write, correct? So that's why we're going to do that. So we're going from zero to 255, i plus plus that makes sense and we have our brackets we're going to analog right to pin 9 uh, and then I so this will analog right 0 we'll come back through and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on and we'll put a little bit of delay in there we'll say delay of 2 two milliseconds and uh, so it'll ramp up zero to 255 in increments of one and then it will delay in between each one of those analog writes so then I'm gonna also I'm gonna copy and paste that that little for loop there we're gonna do another one that starts at 255 and then we're gonna do greater than equal to zero and minus minus so now we're going to go 255 down to zero decrementing by one each time analog right is fine delay is fine so that should be it that we should be good to go there let me kill these lights real quick and we'll do a quick test run There we go, and hopefully that's just that's showing up well. Increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. <laughs> uh, let, let's change that delay a little bit. We'll put the delay up to like eight and eight. I'll re upload. There you go, now you can, it's a little slower. So there we go, that's a PWM output right there on that LED. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so uh, let's try, let's do, let's do something a little different here. So we're gonna stay on pin nine with that LED, but we're gonna throw, we're gonna throw a potentiometer into this mix, which we've used recently before. And we're going to, uh, we'll take this pin here over to, we'll, we'll steal the ground right here. Steal the ground from the LED. And then we'll take this other side right here. We'll take that over to a five volt source here on the Arduino. There we go. And then center pin plug into center pin there and then we'll take center pin over to let's say A5 there we go alright so now this time what I want to do is we're going to use before 
when we did a uh, potentiometer project, we chose how many LEDs to light up. This time we're gonna use our potentiometer as a digital dimmer. So um, let's, let's go back to our code here and I'll just delete this stuff out. And let's see, do we need to actually define anything here? No, I think I might be able to do this in one, one statement. Let's see, let's see. We're gonna do an analog right and then we're gonna do a map. We need to map, remember here, we have coming off of our analog read, we have some value, but zero to, what, oh, zero to 1024. And then analog right needs to be some value. Um, I'm sorry, zero to 1023. Analog right needs to be some value, zero to 255. So we need to map those things out. So we're gonna use the map command here map and we're going to say the the variable is going to be analog read of let's see we're on a5 comma all right now we need to say what our ranges are that analog read of the analog read that's going to be 0 to 10 23 and then the output of the map statement should be a range of 0 to 255, we we'll close those parentheses and you see it tells us right there, so we need to close this other set. We get lost on those sometimes. Let me check this, I think it should be good. Too few, ar too few arguments to function void analog right. Analog right, oh, oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Um, I'm saying what the value is to analog right, but what I'm not saying is where where I'm doing this at. Okay, so here we go. So analog right, we need to say um, which pin we're gonna analog right to. And we're gonna analog right to pin nine. Let me check that. Okay, it looks like that's good now. Okay, that happens. Happens a lot for me. <laughs> All right, we're, we're uploaded. So I'm gonna turn the potentiometer, you can see the LED gets brighter. And as I turn it back, let me zoom in a bit here. Okay. Turn it back, it gets dimmer. Turn it this way, it gets brighter. And that's full brightness there. So now we have basically made a one line digital dimmer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that is our introduction to pwm there's more that we can do with it and like i said before um sh soon we will be looking at this motor motor control here this motor driver which does use pwm so this is going to be a cool little video here but that's it for pwm hope y'all enjoyed thanks a lot for watching take care Bye-bye.